We're surrounded by great computing technologies that have enormous impacts on our lives and enable us to do things unimaginable just a few years ago. They also change us. They change how we live, what information we see, and how we interact with each other. What's the impact of these technologies on society? Are they having the effects we want? Are there unintended consequences? There are a lot of critical societal problems that computer science can really play an important role in helping us solve. You know, things like uh, children with not enough to eat, things like people moving from country to country and not having a place to live. And we try to solve those traditionally by just building new technology. New technology is not sufficient. You really have to understand what's going on in those environments, culturally, socially, economically, politically, both to make technology that makes a difference and to resolve the problem. Students in our societal computing PhD program are taking on these challenges. They're doing critical research that's changing the world. They're asking the right questions and applying machine learning, statistics, and network analysis techniques to find answers. They're designing algorithms and systems and deploying them in the world to expand our notion of what's possible. So right now, increasingly, we're seeing automation. We're seeing situations where people depend more on computing to work in the way that they expect. What we need are people who understand the complexity of the algorithms that are being used, but people who are also sensitive to the societal um, needs that people have as individuals to make sure that those, the, that software um, doesn't harm people, um, doesn't uh, disenfranchise people, and so on. I build sensing solutions for problems in the area of health, fitness, and global development. In low resource environments, such as Sub-Saharan Africa, there are far more smartphones than there are dedicated medical equipments. What if we were able to turn all of those billions of smartphones into, say, a stethoscope, or a very accurate and inexpensive asthma, glucose, or blood pressure monitor? Well, I think privacy is something that most people value, um, and it's not always obvious when it is slowly eroding. And so I think it's really important that, um, that we're, we're paying attention, that we're considering the privacy issues as we develop these new services and tools, and think about ways that we can offer uh, these great tools while at the same time protecting people's privacy. My work focuses on game theory and machine learning and their applications to the areas such as security and sustainability. For example, how do we develop new AI techniques to build better patrol routes inside protected wildlife reserves, saving critically endangered species? Or how can we design better intelligence systems for the Coast Guard, say, to prevent terrorist attacks? One of the issues that uh, is really uh, very close to my heart is how can we as individuals keep up with the complexity of data flows uh, that uh, we interact with during the course of our daily lives. Uh, the challenge obviously is that because of the variety of scenarios that we interact with, because of the variety of services that we interact with and the very complex privacy policies, it is absolutely impossible for a regular human being to actually keep up with that level of complexity. From online shopping to engineering massive civil works projects, almost everything we do relies on software. And the way we create it is undergoing a revolution with the emergence of open source from the fringes into the mainstream. The change is transformative. We can build powerful functionality very quickly, very cheaply, but this also leads to greater interdependence. Shared software relies on other shared software and, and so on, creating a big, complex, highly interdependent socio-technical ecosystem. And these ecosystems are our computational infrastructure, but we really don't understand how these ecosystems work, which uh, ones are sustainable, uh, which we can rely on, and, and what we can't. By exploring things like how developers make key decisions about what projects to use, or where to contribute, or how policies, practices, and tools allow ecosystems to respond effectively to change. Our work on socio-technical systems and societal computing is yielding new knowledge and insight that will help accelerate innovation in our development of new technologies. We actually have a huge project right now on um, identifying members who are ISIS supporters online so that we can identify these kind of extremist groups, who are members of them, identify what their propaganda is, and help design and influence counter-messaging strategy to uh, reduce the overall threat. Modern software development is inherently social. 
Platforms like GitHub and Stack Overflow have completely changed the ways people develop software. But despite their popularity and potential to enhance productivity, these new modes of production may also have less desirable consequences. Like, did you know that women and minorities are more underrepresented in these communities than in most of the tech industry? My work uses big data to understand both the value and the social cost of these new modes of production. We're using digital archaeology techniques to find data-driven answers to some of the most challenging questions about developing software, those that deal with the human aspects. One of the projects that we're doing in the space of applied systems is, is that on smart buildings, where the essential idea is that how do we make our buildings, the current buildings that we have that aren't very smart, much more performative and much more efficient by turning them into programmable systems just like you have a computer system today. Their preparation at Carnegie Mellon has enabled our students to take leadership roles taking academic positions at leading universities like Harvard, Berkeley, Vanderbilt, UC San Diego, West Point, Keist in South Korea, Peking University in China. They're doing groundbreaking research at companies like Google, IBM, and Microsoft. And they're joining or starting their own ventures to deploy new technologies in the world. So the, the student who would flourish in our societal computing program is somebody who has a deeply technical background and interest. But they realize they're missing something. They're not just satisfied with additional computer science education. They almost always have some other burning interest as well, whether it's in uh, privacy or whether it's in network analysis or in policy. They should have a deep interest in one or more of the many different social sciences. They combine uh, this deep technical interest with some practical or applied sphere, and bringing those together in societal computing has worked out really well for them. Students who are interested in going out there and solving societal problems uh, using their technical skills, th those are the students we're looking for.